Hey there everyone, this is Michael, the nootropic reviewer, and during this video we're going to talk about the side effects of taking L-theanine as a nootropic supplement. So what we know about L-theanine is that it's one of the most effective supplements specifically at reducing anxiety levels. And if we look at this chart over here, you can see it up there with ashwagandha and with things like lion's mane. As shown in this study right here, after eight weeks of daily use of L-theanine, there was beneficial effects on depressive symptoms, anxiety, sleep disturbance, and cognitive impairment. But what's the major problem with L-theanine and why do I think it's a little bit overhyped? It's because it does come with a lot of bad side effects. So that's what we're going to talk about during this video today. We're going to go over the side effects. We're going to go over the proper uh, way in which you should take L-theanine to reduce the side effects and some nice alternatives you have. So if you're unfamiliar with L-theanine, what you need to know is that it's a naturally occurring supplement that's most commonly found in green tea. However, you really need to consume a lot of green tea in order for you to extract the L-theanine benefits. We're talking um, seven to eight cups of green tea, which of course is not practical in an everyday sense. So people are supplementing with L-theanine in order for them to accomplish feeling that like relaxed feeling that can make them more productive. But the number one uh, major side effect is the demotivation. And this is probably the very reason why it almost always makes sense to mix L-theanine with caffeine. This is one of the most known nootropic supplements out there for productivity. It's called caffeine and L-theanine because what happens is L-theanine is going to give you the relaxed feeling, the feeling of anti-anxiety, whereas caffeine is going to pretty much do the opposite. Caffeine is going to give you the energy, give you the motivation, but often when it comes to ingesting caffeine or coffee, it comes with that little bit of anxiety. So with L-theanine, it kind of lightly removes that. This phenomena of feeling like a lack of motivation, it's really common. This Reddit user posts why L-theanine makes you feel unmotivated. So here's the solution because I feel like for a lot of us, we have been brainwashed to think that we should be taking L-theanine because let's face it, it's one of the most hyped up nootropics out there. It's pretty much in every nootropic blend. However, if we actually take the approach of eliminating it from our nootropic stack altogether for a couple of weeks and see how you perform, you would be really convinced that it's really not helping you too much because in the grand scheme of things, we're taking nootropics in order to help our productivity and be the best version of ourselves. And sometimes L-theanine has a good purpose, perhaps if you're like in a bad mood or something, but then it kind of just like acts like a band-aid. You don't need it every single day. The second major side effect to consider is the nausea that you get or some people experience headaches. And I think the main reason why that happens is because L-theanine unfortunately lowers your blood pressure, which is good for people who have high blood pressure. But if you're somebody that maybe deals with low blood pressure sometimes, maybe you fast throughout the course of the day, if you take L-theanine, then it can cause you to be very unproductive and you get in the state where you're, you've got brain fog, you don't know what to do, you can't remember things. And the third major side effect is that it's very unpredictable, meaning Sometimes you take L-theanine and you feel great. And sometimes you take L-theanine and you feel awful, like I mentioned before, because I've taken L-theanine for many years now and I still feel like I haven't figured it out. One thing I do like about it is that it seems to always work well when I've taken a lot of stimulants, whether it's modafinil I've taken or phenylparacetam, which is a great supplement that you can take once a day and literally get energetic benefits throughout the whole course of the day that I've talked about in this video here. When you're using some of these stronger supplements, you, you can use L-theanine with uh, some certainty, with some predictability, knowing that it's gonna calm you down and help you get the most out of the stimulants. But when you're taking it by itself, you just don't know how you're gonna feel and sometimes it feels like flip of the coin. And one of the most common things that I get asked about L-theanine is, Michael, do I need to cycle off of it? Do I need to take breaks? And the fact is, we're all different. Things which work for me may not work for you, but it's been my experience that I would say half of the people need to take time off of L-theanine, whereas half the people, they do just okay taking it like every day, every day of the year. But um, there are select individuals that what happens is they take L-theanine and they build a tolerance to it so quickly that by the end of the week, like after five or six days of taking it consecutively, they need to like double or triple their dose in order to get the same benefits they were able to get from day one. As shown in this study over here, and this study was really neat because what they measured was reaction time. Time. And you would think, okay, if, if L-theanine is going to calm you down, then it certainly wouldn't be something which would help you with reaction time. However, what the findings actually concluded was that for the subjects that had anxiety or the subjects that were prone to anxiety, they did see an improvement with the reaction time when they were using L-theanine. But for people that weren't, uh, people who, you know, would associate themselves to having 
high anxiety levels, they didn't see any benefit of taking L-theanine. And for that reason, maybe it could be like detrimental for their performance because of the fact that it can be somewhat demotivating. And this was a pretty well done study. It's hard to find anything wrong with this study. It was double blind. Uh, the serving size of L-theanine was good. It was 200 milligrams. And the form of L-theanine they were using was Suntheanine, which is the best form pretty much. Now let's uh, talk about how to take L-theanine. This is the product I've been pretty much using the past couple of years at least. It's the Nootropics Depot L-theanine capsules. Each capsule is 200 milligrams. That's a pretty common serving size, but if you can find it in 100 milligrams, then that would be good too because you can assess your tolerance that way. Now, uh, this supplement, it doesn't really matter too much. The brand you get it from, the vendor, I realize a lot of you aren't in the US or in Canada, so you should be okay. And it looks like this uh, white powder, as you'll see here. If you're using L-theanine to boost your mood, then you're better off taking 200 milligrams once in the morning within a couple hours of waking up and then another serving about five to six hours afterwards. So something like 9 a.m. and then again at 2 p.m. For some people, they can find L-theanine to be a little bit stimulating, a little bit stimulatory, so I would avoid taking it before bed. And then if you're going to use L-theanine specifically for productivity, you want to make sure that you're accompanying it with a caffeine product. Have that at least an hour after waking up. It's never a good idea to have caffeine the first hour when you wake up. So take your L-theanine sometimes afterwards and then five to six hours after that, take another serving of caffeine and L-theanine. So if you wake up at eight o'clock a.m., for example, you can take one capsule at nine o'clock a.m. and then one again at two o'clock p.m. And that should allow you to be productive, uh, be energized and get about a good day. And if you're not comfortable taking caffeine, I realize a lot of you are trying to avoid stimulants and for good reasons too, then the second serving at two o'clock, instead of having the caffeine and L-theanine blend, you can just take a little bit of L-theanine, but I'm talking 100 milligrams. However, this may be challenging because again, you'll commonly find the L-theanine products in 200 milligram capsules. Now I'll share a couple of alternatives with you. The first being 5-HTP, and this is one of the strongest things you can take to improve your mood. It um, specifically acts on the neurotransmitter called serotonin. So taking this is like taking a hit of serotonin. It's very difficult to be sad or upset after um, in ingesting 5-HTP. It pretty much works instantly. These are 50 milligram pills. You probably need two capsules, so 100 milligrams. And how this acts is kind of like forget your problems, but the problem with it is that it's temporary. It doesn't really have any long-term benefits if you were to use 5-HTP every single day. Plus, I don't really think it's a good idea to artificially like increase your serotonin levels in the first place. I would much rather have you I rely on building thick skin and having resilience altogether. And then this is the second alternative. It's called L-tyrosine. It's similar in that it's also a naturally occurring amino acid. Where L-tyrosine is most commonly found is in chicken breast. It's also found in egg whites. But when you have it in supplemental form and when you have it fasted especially, it really helps to fight stress. So perhaps it can be said that L-theanine is better when it comes to like mood and making you happy but L-tyrosine is better when it comes to fighting stress, fighting fatigue. Like the ideal way that I love using L-tyrosine is let's say it's the middle of the day, I'm feeling a little bit tired, I need some extra energy, maybe I need some appetite suppression, then I can have some L-tyrosine, feel very alert, energized, and like sharp. It almost feels like a, like a natural uh, kind of good non-stimulating version of caffeine in that it acts very similarly in which uh, L-tyrosine is known to increase dopamine. And as a result of increasing dopamine, you feel more motivated. So if you're somebody that just wants to like fight off stress, fight off fatigue, still be productive, then definitely consider L-tyrosine. I've talked about it in this video you'll find over here. And I hope you all found this information helpful. If you did, then consider subscribing, drop a like, and I review all the comments and I love hearing your feedback. And don't forget to join us on Discord. And if you'd like to talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, then do consider subscribing on Patreon or messaging me on Instagram. And I'll look forward to seeing you all next time. Thank you again for your interest in nootropics.